Hoi Hawan on the northeast coast of Hong Kong, this marine park is some 20 miles from the bustling financial center. It might be quieter here than in the city, but below the surface, another metropolis is teeming with life. On clear days, this boat is designed to bring people closer to the biodiversity in their own backyard. I'm here to see Hong Kong's coral reefs. There's actually more coral here than in the Caribbean. That's according to government figures. But one local startup is working to make sure it stays that way. As diving destinations go, Hong Kong might not boast the most spectacular views. But for marine biologist Vriko Yu, these waters offer more than initially meets the eye. It's a lie if anybody tells you corals in Hong Kong are pretty, because they're not. Um, but they are always there. Hong Kong's corals are persisting against the odds, surviving centuries of land development, coral mining, and pollution. But for more coral to grow, there needs to be stable bedrock, something Hong Kong's degraded ocean floor is lacking, he says. Working with other scientists and architects from the University of Hong Kong, you develop technology to restore Hong Kong's coral reefs using 3D printing. We were thinking about what's the best material or what kind of structure would best provide the foundation for corals to grow. The team makes the hexagonal tiles out of clay, a material non-toxic to ocean life, while 3D printing allows them to mimic the complex surface structure of corals that are already suited to Hong Kong's environment. The design of the reef tiles is actually inspired by the brain coral, where they have this valley of patterns um, that looks cool, but also effective in attracting marine life. So we're now in Coral Beach. This is our experiment site where we deployed about 130 reef tiles. They installed the first tiles in 2020. So far, four times more coral has survived on the clay tiles than on traditionally used structures like concrete blocks, says Yu. But coral doesn't grow overnight. Yu predicts it will take at least three to five years for the reef to mature. In the meantime, you and partnering professor David Baker have founded startup Arky Reef. They hope to attract capital from companies looking to boost their environmental credentials, which will help fund future research. So for the next installation, businesses can adopt a reef tile and follow its progress. We don't want to be a company that is simply fabricating an object that people put in the ocean and walk away from it. We have to engage with our clients across that whole spectrum, from consulting to installation and to monitoring and management. However, experts warn that to gain significant investment, startups need to quantify the value of reef restoration. Like anything that is privatized, you really have to monetize your costs and benefits very carefully. And when it comes to nature valuation, it's just tricky. The livelihoods benefits is there. 450 million people around the world live within 60 kilometers of coral reefs. But making sure that you can actually know the benefit of keeping it in place rather than taking fish out of it or using coral for something else, I think it's a little bit of a challenge. Archie Reef isn't the only startup restoring coral. Coral Vita grows coral fragments on a land-based farm in the Caribbean, where the company says it can develop faster than in the ocean and replants them onto degraded reefs. But Baker believes that Arky Reef can help regrow coral in areas where it has entirely disappeared, a situation which is becoming increasingly common. Scientists predict that climate change and pollution may destroy up to 90% of coral reefs globally in the next 20 years. Creating that new hard bottom can help overcome that problem and kind of reset the clock on these coral communities. Arky Reef will need to overcome hurdles before it can scale its technology and prove it's profitable, including lowering the cost of producing the tiles. We live by the sea and everything that we do is closely tied to the ocean. All the pollutants that we have in our daily life will potentially end up in the ocean at some point. Restoration is not only what the government should be doing or academics or scientists, it's really about everybody.